Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to give your sprite boundaries in your Scratch game. So let's just say that you've created a game and you've drawn some boundaries and your sprite is supposed to navigate around the game and get to different objects like the maze I've set up here. If I want my sprite to have to navigate without being able to go through the walls, I need to set up an if-then statement that lets the game know that my sprite is not allowed to cross the purple lines. You can see at this point, if I, I've programmed him so that you can push the, the right, the left, the up, and the down arrows to make him move, but he can just head right on through the boundaries and not have to get straight to the bananas without having to go the long way. And this is what I want to prevent. I want him to have to go around my course before he's allowed to get to the bananas. So in order to make those boundaries as though they were actually walls, you have to put a few things together. These are the code blocks that you are going to need to find. The first one is our events block, and it is the when flag is clicked. You'll find that under the events section at the very top. The next thing you need is a control. You need this forever control, and that's going to be found under control. And it's the third one down here. So you'll drag that over and stick that one right there. You're going to need actually two controls for this particular piece of code. You're going to need the if then statement, which is actually the fourth one down. And that one's going to go inside of your forever code. Because what you want to do is you want to tell it that when your user starts playing your game, that the entire time, so forever, if they are touching, so this is your sensing block, if they're touching the color of your boundary, then it turns them around. It doesn't let them go through that boundary. So the touching color is actually a sensing block. So you'll find that under sensing and it's actually the second one down. So you'll grab that one there and you'll stick that in inside of your if then statement. So it'll read if touching the color and by default it'll be this green color then. Now if you want to use this green color you can but you might want to have a different color boundary depending on your game. So you're going to go ahead and change that color by clicking on the color itself. There will be this little pop down. If you know the color saturation and brightness you can adjust it manually or you can just click this little um, icon here that has the image with the little dropper and that will highlight your play screen. And then it has this big magnifying glass. So you'll find the color of your boundary and click on it. And that will change the color right there. So now we're telling it that when the flag's pressed forever, if we're touching the purple, we want to have some motion happen. And motion we want is we want him to turn away from the wall. We want him to not be allowed to pass over. So in order to prevent him from crossing over that boundary, we need both a turn degree block and a move steps block. Come to your side and find the motion um, blocks and you'll find the move 10 steps block at the very top and then you'll find the turn and this one is going to be clockwise, 15 degrees, um, right below it. So you're going to need both of those. Let's go ahead and drop those into our if then statement with our turn at the top and the steps below because we want him to actually turn around before he walks away. We don't want him to walk through and then turn around because then he'll get over our boundary. So we have to always be thinking about the sequence we're putting our blocks. Now, 15 degrees is not really the we want him to fully turn around so if you were you could picture yourself if you walked into a wall you would probably fully turn around so that's what we want we want him to fully turn around let's see what it looks like at 15 degrees though so i'm going to go ahead and push my my uh flag and i'm going to walk into the wall so see how he kind of crosses over the wall? That's really not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something a little more realistic as though he were not allowed to cross over that wall. So I'm actually gonna make him turn a full 180 degrees. So let's try that and see how that looks. That's exactly what I want. I want it to be impossible for him to cross that wall so that he has to navigate around properly to get wherever he needs to go. 
So he'll have to go this way, this way, and then he can get over to my bananas. That is all you need to create a boundary.